Hello everyone and welcome back to Psychology 101. In this video, we are going to discuss a very famous concept in psychology, namely the cocktail party effect. This effect refers to your ability to focus your attention on one particular stimulus while ignoring others. As an example, suppose you are at a cocktail party and you're having a conversation with a group of friends. Despite all the noise around you, such as the loud music and the background chatter, you are still able to focus and pay attention to the conversation that you're having. Simultaneously, you are also able to effectively filter out and ignore all of this background noise around you. The question then becomes, how does this cocktail party effect work? There are a few different theories that attempt to answer the question of how we selectively choose to attend to some stimuli while ignoring others. These different theories all agree that initially we are bombarded with all kinds of stimuli. In our cocktail party example, we are bombarded with the conversation we're having but also by all other background noise. However, because of the limitations in our cognitive capacity, we are unable to process everything at once. This means that at some point in our auditory processing, some of the things that we hear will have to be filtered out. What the theories disagree on, however, concerns how this filtering process works as well as when it occurs. Broadly speaking, the various theories can be categorized into three types of theories. We have the early selection models, we have the intermediate selection models, and we have the late selection models. Starting off with the early selection models, one of the earliest theories on this topic was introduced by Broadbent in 1958. Broadbent argued that the selection process of what stimuli is to be attended to and what is to be filtered out takes place at an early stage of our processing. When we are initially bombarded with all kinds of stimuli such as the conversation, the music and other background noise, the initial processing of the auditory information starts. This initial processing involves the extraction of the basic physical properties of all auditory information such as the pitch and loudness. These physical properties are very briefly stored in our sensory memory which is a form of short-term memory that is specific to each sensory system. Subsequently, a selective filter is used to select what stimuli is to be processed further and what is to be filtered out. The decision as to what stimuli will be processed further is determined based on our goals. In our cocktail party example, our goal is to pay attention to our conversation. According to Broadbent's model, our goal of engaging in our conversation will lead our selective filter to select only the conversation we're paying attention to to be further processed so that we can understand what is being said. Thus, while we initially process the physical characteristics of everything we hear at the party, only the conversation we're paying attention to is eventually processed in any sort of deep cognitive way. In this sense, the theory can be illustrated by a bottleneck. In the same way that a bottleneck will limit the amount of liquid that can be poured out at once, the information that we can fully process at once will also be limited by our cognitive capacity. Most of the available information will be filtered out and lost. One problem with this model is that it takes a black and white approach to processing. It argues that you process the things you pay attention to and ignore everything else. However, as most of you likely have experienced at some point, sometimes we can pay attention to something, such as the conversation we're having at the cocktail party, when suddenly someone behind us calls our name. Upon hearing our names, we immediately shift our attention away from the conversation to the person behind us calling our name. According to Broadbent's model, this would be impossible, because the auditory stimulus of someone mentioning your name would not be something you would have paid attention to in advance, and therefore, someone mentioning your name is something you would have filtered out and ignored. Thus, although this model is a good starting point in understanding this concept, it is not perfect. To help address this issue, Anne Treisman, a student of Broadbent, came up with a modified version of Broadbent's model called the Attenuation Model of Attention. While Broadbent saw selective attention as a black or white all or non phenomenon, Treisman saw it as a matter of degree. 
Treisman, just like Broadbent, argued that in our cocktail party example, the physical characteristics of the conversation and the background noise is processed. However, while Broadbent argued only the things we pay attention to, in other words the conversation, will be processed in any deep cognitive way, Treisman argued that we process both the things we pay attention to and the things we don't pay attention to. In our cocktail party example, Treisman believed that we process meaning from both our conversation but also from all of the background noise. However, the processing of our conversation is prioritized and is done to a larger degree. The filtering process in her model therefore acts as an attenuator similar to a remote control in which the strength or volume is turned up for the attendant message but turned down for the unattended message. Thus, Treisman's model allows for us to shift our attention to the person behind us saying our name because although the processing of our conversation is prioritized, some processing of unattended stimuli still occurs. Because Treisman's model argues that the filtering process is taking place while meaning is being processed, the model can be seen as an intermediate selection model. Beyond the theories of Broadbent and Treisman, there are other theories, for instance the one proposed by Deutsch and Deutsch, that can be considered late-stage selection models. According to this model, it is argued that, within sensory limits, both attended and unattended stimuli are processed to the same depth. This takes place until both the attended and unattended messages are understood. Thus, within your attentional capacity, both the conversation that we're having as well as all of the background noise are being processed equally deep until the semantic meaning of the stimuli is understood. Only then are the most important stimuli, which in this case is the conversation that we're having, selected for further processing. Thus. While the filtering process takes place before meaning has been processed in Broadman's model and during the processing of meaning for Trisman's model, it takes place after meaning has been processed in the model by Deutsch and Deutsch. In this video, we hope you have learned something new about the cocktail party effect and about selective attention. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving us a like and subscribing to the channel. Don't forget to ring that notification bell and we'll see you in the next video.